Analog horror bursting with Midwest emo melancholy and 90s nostalgia. A mystery involving strange scenes being edited into movies that are rented from a video store. Universal Harvester by John Darnell takes place during the 1990s in a small Midwestern town in Iowa called Nevada. If the name John Darnell sounds familiar to you, then you might know him as the main musician from the band The Mountain Goats. This book has the same quiet and sad rage that is perfectly encapsulated in a lot of his music. The book centers around a man named Jeremy who works at a small video rental store in his small Midwestern town. He's in his early 20s and doesn't really have any direction in his life. He and his father live together and he has been reluctant to leave home on account of his mother dying in a car accident when he was a teenager. Regardless, Jeremy has been content to live a quiet life and he doesn't really get the urges that many Midwest protagonists get, which is the urge to leave their hometown for a variety of reasons. He doesn't mind working at the video store and in fact he finds a quiet comfort in the familiar predictability of every day. All of this changes one day when a local teacher who is a regular of the store returns a tape and says that there is something wrong with it. She explains that it's not just a defective videotape but a strange scene that's obviously not part of the movie somehow got spliced into the footage. Jeremy takes the tape home to check it out for himself and he ends up seeing a short but disturbing home footage style scene that looks like something out of a snuff film. A dark and grainy scene suddenly interrupts the actual movie to show what looks like a tool shed with someone tied to a chair and a bag over their head. After a few minutes, the scene cuts back to the actual movie as if nothing had happened at all. Initially, Jeremy wants to ignore all of this because any interruption to the regular rhythm of his life takes him far outside of his comfort zone of quiet stoicism. Unfortunately for him, more customers start to return tapes with complaints of odd scenes being edited into them. Once his boss finally watches some of the tapes, she becomes obsessed with unraveling the mystery of how these scenes have been put on the tapes. They're not supposed to be altered very easily. She wants to know what's going on in these creepy and disturbing images and who's putting them there. That's the basic setup and plot, and I'll stop there so I don't accidentally give too much away. I will say that the main catalyst of the book is the strange and disturbing scenes that are spliced into the rented movies. The book does take kind of a long and meandering trip around different themes and even different timelines. About halfway through reading this, I started to realize that it's not really a horror story, but it's a story that uses the tropes and drive of horror to tell a story more focused on law coping, and dependency. The narrative does an excellent job of making me feel like I'm in the Midwest. I could see the vast expanse of corn and long stretches of country highway. All of the characters felt like small town locals and the details in the dialogue really shine. When characters talk to each other and even when the narrator addresses the reader, it has a Midwest charm and familiarity by saying things like, yeah, the Johnson place out past Collins, or no, Kate doesn't work out at the trucking company anymore, she's doing admin work for the lumberyard. Everything is said with a closeness and expectation that we all know these people and the inner workings of their lives. I have family who live in a small rural town in Illinois and this book made me feel like I was right there with them. I think an interesting theme explored through the main protagonist Jeremy is the subversion of the I want to leave my hometown trope. Throughout the book, Jeremy feels like there's nothing wrong with not wanting to see the world. He feels like why shouldn't he want to settle down where he grew up and work the same job for 40 years. I think the narrative uses dependency as a way for Jeremy to cope with the loss of his mother. He feels a strong sense of responsibility to stay with his father and try to maintain things as they are are for as long as possible. The book also does a fantastic job of portraying and exploring the idealized American image of the stoic masculine male. All of the men in this book take careful measure to not show too much interest in other people's lives and the thought of burdening another person with their own feelings is too much to bear. I think this idea is tested wonderfully by the strange mystery of the rented tapes. Characters are pushed to their emotional limits when they've lived their entire lives not giving in to curiosity because it's considered rude to pry, but as more information is discovered and the trail leads closer and closer to home, they have no choice but to crack open their shells and step out of them. 
This book isn't very scary at all, and after the initial introduction of the premise, the horror tropes begin to fade away, and it really becomes a story about small town melancholy, the loss of mothers, and how to deal with emotional trauma when culturally the standard thing to do is not talk about it. This story doesn't have the same kind of intense and sharp despair that most horror books do, but instead it has a constant and almost pleasant throb of sorrow on every page. The kind of sadness that comes from living a life in which you know exactly what's to come and exactly what's expected of you, and you don't have the ability or desire to break out of it, even though you kind of know you should. So if trips through cornfields of melancholy sounds like a good time to you, then I would check out Universal Harvester by John Darnell.